Welcome to week 15 of Algebra 1 with Mrs. Weibark. This week we will begin our study of polynomials. We will be looking at multiplying and dividing monomials. You can find the notes to go along with this video on Moodle and they will also be passed out in class. There will be two pages of notes that we will fill out as we proceed. This is what the first page looks like. This is what the second page looks like, and these will be added to your interactive math notebook. We are going to begin by talking about vocabulary. A monomial is a number, variable, or a product of both. In this example, x is the base, n is the exponent. When we have a base raised to an exponent, we collectively call that a power. A constant is a number without a variable, such as the number 5 or negative 7 or 1 half. And a coefficient is the number in front of a variable. So if I had the example 2x, the coefficient would be 2. If I had the term 4x squared, the coefficient would be 4, the base would be x, and the exponent would be 2. Please take a moment to fill this out in the upper left corner of the first page of your notes. We will begin discussing multiplying monomials. We are going to look at the rules for a power of a power, a product of powers, and the power of a product. As you can see, these rules have really similar names, so it's important to look carefully at the differences among them as we proceed. This is what the first section of your completed notes should look like. We are now going to move on to the power of a power. A power, such as x to the n, when raised to another power, means that we start with one base of an exponent and we raise it to an x, another exponent, such as x to the n raised to the m. When this happens, the example that we like to use is a to the m raised to the n. And this becomes a to the m times n. So when we raise a power to a power, we multiply the exponents. So for example, for example, if I had x to the a to the b raised to the c, my new expression would be x raised to the a times b times c. We are next going to take a look at the power, or rather the product, of powers. Product, you may recall, means to multiply, and we're starting with powers, such as x to the n. So if I multiply two powers with the same base, that's very important, they must have the same base, then the rule becomes a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. In this case, I add the exponents. In our last example, power of a power, we multiply the exponents. But when we're multiplying the same bases, we add the exponents. We have one more rule for multiplying monomials, and this is the power of a product. This occurs when we are multiplying within parentheses and we are raising it to a power. So if I'm multiplying within the parentheses and then raising to an exponent, an example would be a times b raised to the m. And this becomes a to the m, b to the m. Even though this is not technically distributing it, we like to think that we distribute the exponent 
to everything in the parentheses. So for example, if I were to start with four times a times b, all raised to the m, this becomes four to the m, a to the m, b to the m. Another example would be if I were to start with something like six a squared b to the third, all raised to the m, I would first raise six to the m. Then I have a squared raised to the m. This is a power of a power. So this becomes a to the 2m and b to the 3m. So you can see that sometimes these rules are used together. You should now have the first page of notes completed. We are now going to move on to dividing monomials. We will be looking at the quotient of powers and the power of a quotient. Starting with the quotient of powers, this occurs when we are dividing powers. So we are dividing two powers with the same base. It's very important that they must have the same base. The rule says that a to the m divided by a to the n becomes a to the m minus n. So in this case, we subtract the exponents. Our next situation is the power of a quotient. And in this case, we are dividing within parentheses, then raising the whole thing to an exponent. So in this example, we might start with something like a divided by b all raised to the m. And this becomes a to the m divided by b to the m. And once again, we use the phrase distribute. <clears throat> So really, we are going to distribute the exponent to everything in both the numerator and denominator. So for example, <clears throat> if I have a squared divided by b to the third all raised to the m, this would become a to the 2m divided by b to the 3m. Our last topic today is special exponents. There are special circumstances that occur when we have zero exponents and negative exponents. Beginning with zero exponents, it's important to know that any non-zero number raised to the zero power equals one, always and all the time. So our algebraic rule says that a raised to the zero equals one. I might have something as simple as a to the zero or I could have an example such as x to the zero, and it would still equal one. I could even have something far more complex, such as three x plus y divided by four a. And if all of it 
is collectively raised to the zero power, it is still simply equal to one. And our last topic for today is negative exponents. Just as a quick reminder, the reciprocal of a fraction occurs when we flip the numerator and denominator. We say that the top becomes the bottom and the bottom becomes a top. We use this when we have a base that has a negative exponent. So for example, a to the negative n becomes 1 over a to the positive n. So in order to get rid of the negative in the exponent, we create its reciprocal 1 over a to the n, and we change the, the exponent from negative to positive. Sometimes we have an example in which the base and its exponent is already in the denominator, such as 1 over b to the negative 2. This 2 can be flipped to become b to the positive 2. We also have examples sometimes where we already have a quotient of powers, such as x to the negative 2 over y to the negative 3. In this case, the numerator becomes the new denominator, and I change the exponent from negative to positive. The denominator becomes the numerator, and I change, change its exponent to also be positive. And this is what the last page of your completed notes should look like. Thank you for watching this Weibark production.